Okay, so now that we've established that it's best to be using liquid calories, liquid carbs, what types of carb sources should you be using? And this is, this is critical. They are not, all carbs are not created equal. Far from it. And uh, what you need to understand is that the way that these carbs are getting into your system is through osmosis. That's the beauty of it. There's no digestive requirements, therefore no blood requirement to the stomach. It's getting absorbed through osmosis. Well, if you go back to your 10th grade biology, if you remember osmosis, you have a, a membrane and a fluid on either side of the membrane. And what you're trying to do is get the fluid to pass from one side of the membrane to the other. Well, in this particular case, the membrane is your, your cellular membrane. And you're trying to get what you've ingested, the fluids that are in your stomach and intestinal tract, you're trying to get them into your cellular system. Well, via osmosis, the way that it works is that the fluid on the, in your stomach and intestinal tract, before it can be absorbed, it has to be an equal or lower concentration than your cellular, cellular fluids. So that's measured in something that's called osmolality. That's the concentration of a solution. This is going to get a little, a little technical, but hang with me. I'll try and explain it as, as simply as I can. So a, uh, if you start with water, water is obviously far less concentrated concentrated than your cellular fluids. That's what's called hypotonic. It's like water. As you increase carbs to it, it the concentration will increase and it will eventually become what's called isotonic. If you've ever heard of an isotonic drink, that's one that is roughly equivalent in concentration to your cellular fluids. If you continue to add even more carbs to the solution, it'll become what's called hypertonic. In other words, it's more concentrated than your cellular fluids. That's, that's bad. So the hypotonic and isotonic solutions, so lower or equal concentration to your cellular fluids, those fluids will be rapidly absorbed and carry the good stuff along with them. If you have a hypertonic solution in your gut, then you're actually going to get reverse osmosis. Your, your body will draw the fluids, your cellular fluids, back across the cellular membrane into your stomach to dilute it down to the point at which the fluids can be absorbed. So you don't, that's why you don't want to use gels without water. A gel is extremely concentrated by itself and if you just take gel uh, and not enough water you're going to end up with the gel sitting in your stomach too long uh, which can cause all kinds of GI issues and gas and things like that and it's going to temporarily dehydrate you because your body's trying to draw the water back in to your gut so that it can absorb it and then eventually it will get absorbed but you get delayed benefits from it so going back to this concentration now it's important to understand I'm going uphill again here it's important to understand uh, what determines the concentration of a fluid and this is where it gets really interesting what it's largely dependent upon is the number of particles that are in the solution and not as dependent upon the size of those particles. And why that's important is because this comes down to the difference, the primary difference between simple sugars and complex carbohydrates when an athlete's using them in these products. So by definition, a simple sugar has a very small molecular structure. It's already broken down, it's simple. A complex carbohydrate on the other hand has a very large molecular structure. It's not broken down. So, for example now, if you start with two bottles of water, those are both hypotonic, right? They're, they're water. If you start adding particles uh, in each bottle, one you're putting in simple sugars, the other you're putting in the complex carbohydrates, they're both gonna get to this isotonic state at roughly the same point. And when they do, they're both going to get absorbed at the same rate, uh, but the one with the complex carbohydrates in them, because it has a larger molecular structure, it's going to have significantly more calories in it. Let's stop here for a second. While I catch my breath, take a look at the view. Uh, so the one with the complex carbohydrates can have roughly double the calories that the one with the simple sugars has. Okay, I had to get out of that wind. Sorry about that, but. Uh, picking up where I left off here. Um, so based on that, 
what's going to happen is the drink that has the complex carbohydrates in it is going to have roughly double the calories or double the energy that the drink with the simple sugars is going to have. So, you know, in a, in a particularly in a longer event, that's, that can make all the difference in the world. If you're doing a particularly if you're doing a, an event that's an hour or two or something like that, your your the amount of energy that you're able to uptake from your products uh, will make all the difference in the world. And you might say, well, what if I just take drinks and products that have a lot of simple sugars, but I just drink twice as much? Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. As you'll see in the next video on hydration, uh, the third video, I believe it is, um, the water is the transport vehicle that, you, that carries the carbs and the electrolytes into your system, but it's also the limiting factor. Your body has a limit to how much it can absorb. And therefore, you know, using products that have all simple sugars is just a, it's a really bad idea. Well, again, I'm going to go into that in a lot more detail.